to Bangladesh today. I am Mukda Kapoor. The Bangladeshi parliament has amended the strong anti-terrorism law which redefines terrorism and one which allows the judiciary to recognize internet matter as proof. The Khalida Zia-led opposition BNP has fervently opposed this move calling the proposed new law as a black law. A report. The anti-terrorism law was first passed in 2009 when the current Awami League had taken over office after the December 2008 elections while it was amended last year, integrating some provisions. The recently amended law provides for capital punishment for terrorism and seditious activities depending upon the seriousness of the crimes. Reportedly, officials who are well known with the outline of the law said that the new bill, which now awaits regular presidential EQS, was also required to overcome few faults, predominantly in areas of interstate cooperation. Well, you see, this is a law point. It's a very technical point. Uh, it, it depends on the, what the law of the land says, as you're talking in terms of terrorism. Well, uh, these uh, pictures in the video, pictures in the internet, they can be morphed, they can be manipulated. I mean, a lot of angles are there to it. So on what uh, context uh, this news is coming up, actually, one has to be very clear. What is the background to it? We have to go through the background. But uh, on the face of it, I personally feel a mature country like India will think number of times before it even ventures into making an amendment like that. Because it can, uh, it, it can uh, uh, sort of a, uh, uh, become counterproductive in maintaining, maintaining law and order and maintaining the law of the land. So I personally feel that uh, this is a very uh, law point of view is a very technical question, which probably uh, very uh, uh, astute lawyer and a lawyer of a very very uh, old standing, high standing can answer the, this question but on the face of it let me tell you one thing it it is well known that the video clips can be adjusted modified manipulated morphed all those things so one may not uh, be able to do justice so, sir, you are on the side of that it will be misused uh, well it can be misused there's no doubt about it yes, there will be uh, the chances otherwise the, why is it not accepted in our, 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 our law? Okay. Exactly. So, you see, our, our people, uh, people uh, think when they make law, though it may seem that law, uh, Kanun law is blind. You know, no, it's not blind. It balances everything and has to see. It sees both sides of the thing. A, a cutting edge can cut you, cut you also. So that you have to be very careful. It's a double-edged sword. So that, that. Obviously, not only on the face of it, actually. In fact, when you make laws like this, then a lot of privacy has, uh, a question of privacy, violation of privacy, personal rights, etc. all these things come into play. How these are going to be used now? I mean, uh, an organization like Gestapo probably will be very happy yeah. to use it, but I don't think a democracy like India will even think about it. Under this amendment, the police officer concerned can instantly apprise the district magistrates about the incidence of a crime that comes under the purview of this law and can also file cases against the accused people. Some provisions in this law also include comprehensive powers to law enforcers and the central bank to impound and seize properties and bank accounts of a suspect without earlier permission from the court to check terror financing. See, we have to understand why this uh, uh, amendment has been carried out to the 2009 uh, Act of Bangladesh uh, uh, against the terrorist activities. Internet is now being used to propagate terrorism. Internet is now being used to indoctrinate people, to train them. And so therefore, Internet is a very important source and a dynamic source also for evidence against terrorist and criminal acts and activities. So, when the nature, the extent uh, and the interconnectedness 
in regard to terrorist activities have increased manifold. So therefore, the action against terrorist activities, they would also need to be located through newer evidence base. And internet can be effective to a large extent. It is of course possible that this might be misused or, or it is also possible that, uh, uh, that uh, the proof uh, uh, sourced from the internet would not be full proof. And so therefore it will be required and it will be a necessity to use these sources in a most ethical way. But we cannot discount the use of internet based material uh, to arrive at and to help and aid the investigation process and as supporting evidence also uh, to prosecute uh, those who are guilty of terrorist activities. The Bangladesh government has thought over the pros and cons, I would believe, while carrying out this amendment. And Bangladesh is now in one of the frontline states where terrorist acts and activities are being fought. The most important of the countries where terrorist activities are taking a heavy toll includes uh, Pak Iraq and Pakistan and Bangladesh. So, therefore, the, this effort of the Bangladesh, though it might draw some flag, it might draw some criticism, or it might seem to be uh, against civil liberties and human rights and so on, but the intention is, I suppose, uh, to uh, fight out the terrorists. A recent study has positioned Bangladesh at 39 among 158 countries as far as impact of terrorism was concerned. The Global Terrorism Index showed Iraq at the top of the list with a score of 9.56 points, followed by Pakistan, Afghanistan and India. According to the study, there had been six incidents of terrorist attacks in Bangladesh since 2001, causing three deaths with four casualties and the level of property damage was rated at two. The index ranks 158 countries over the past 10 years of which only 31 have not experienced a terrorist attack since the year 2001. However, the opposition BNP has vehemently slammed the amendments and boycotted parliament when the law was tabled in the House. They termed it as a black legislation and one which was meant to target them. But the question which arises is, why is the BNP and its ally the jamaat e islami nervous about the tough new provisions in the law when all countries are strengthening counter-terror laws. While moving the bill in the House, Home Minister Mohiuddin Khan Alamgir had said that the amended law was for making Bangladesh's Anti-Terrorist Act of 2009 consistent with the UN resolutions on terrorism. On the other hand, the BNP said it was unclear why the government came up with such a harsh anti-terrorism law, especially with the prevalence of so many laws. The BNP then even went to the extent of saying that this law would turn Bangladesh into a violent police state and it would misuse this law to suppress the voice of the opposition. But the strong rejection of the law by the BNP does raise questions, especially if one considers the allegations of terror financing and Islam banking which have been levelled against the BNP's ally, the Jamaat-e Islami. Yeah, it will apparently uh, seem so, but then I uh, I've already uh, explained that this must be uh, used with, uh, uh, you know, keeping into consideration the ethical standards, and this can be supportive evidence, and I do not think that uh, it will be uh, tantamount to uh, curtailment of human rights. What it might happen, that there is a lot of people who would be, uh, 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 be suspected, but then I suppose that the proof of burden would, would not only be from the internet sources, it would be a, uh, quite a mix of sources. This can be a uh, supportive evidence and then of course it can give and help the investigators uh, uh, to give some, get some lead. BNP and Jamaat, uh, they are opposition political parties. In fact, I don't find uh, any uh, move of the uh, present government which these political parties have supported and in fact the type of polarization that has happened in Bangladesh is extraordinary, it is not uh, needed, not necessary, but then this has happened, but then 
Uh, overall, the Sheikh Hasina government uh, is steadfast in its commitment to fight against terrorism and militant activities and extremists uh, of all types. This also helps and benefits uh, by India or for that matter the civilized countries. Uh, and so therefore, from that standpoint, uh, irrespective of what the BNP and Jamaat may say, uh, the point is that this act and act, uh, act action is going to strengthen the hand of the law enforcement machinery in Bangladesh and all those who are committed to fight against the menace of terrorism. It's a well-known fact that the intensification of Islamic fundamentalism is complicatedly linked to the funding militants get from their finances and sympathizers. One significant feature in this regard has been the part played by the ever-expanding Islamic banking sector. So, with the strict new amendment of intense scrutiny on bank accounts of suspects, it's bound to make the Jamaat e Islami and its accomplices a bit chittery. The terrorizing role of Jamaat e Islami in the 1971 liberation war of the country is documented, and even though a war crimes tribunal was set up in 2010, which was mandated to prosecute the guilty, the suspect activities of the Jamaat and its splinter groups have continued. Bangladesh academician Nazma Shahi has called for the banning of the Jamaat e Islami and blamed the organization for insulting Islam and spreading terror. She also slammed the outfit for the wartime atrocities committed during the 1971 Liberation War. We have seen a violent phase of the Jamaat e Islami. Uh, I think it is nothing new. During uh, Liberation War, these uh, Islamic uh, militant and fanatic groups, they also uh, blamed the um, freedom fighters that they are dividing the Pakistans. And they always uh, behave like this. That's why in uh, 14th December, they killed our uh, intellectuals and uh, our main uh, forces who will build the new Bangladesh. So I think it is nothing new. It is always these uh, fundamentalist groups behave like this in this area. And uh, when the uh, young forces uh, in Shabak Chattur, they uh, um, organized a uh, movement against uh, this uh, uh, war crime uh, delayed of the war crime verdict and uh, there is some uh, which is not uh, actually the people's uh, desire that we are waiting for this verdict for uh, almost 42 years. So uh, this time they also uh, try to use the uh, sentiment of the general people, ignorant people because in this reason, the in ignorant people are very much uh, um, obliged to the religion and uh, they use that sentiment. The Sheikh Hasina-led Awami League government has consistently maintained that it will not bow down to the violence and terror of the hardline Islamists and that there will be zero tolerance against such elements. Also, Bangladesh has seen a noteworthy transformation in the past few years with the administration conducting unrelenting operations against militant groups and violent activities in the state and this new law, the government says, is a part of its stringent anti-terror policy. Despite the presence of terror groups such as the Harkat ul Jihad al Islami Bangladesh and their adherents, the administration, using limited resources, has somehow managed to keep itself from falling victim to the jihadi terror agenda. The Bangladeshi government has on its part introduced a very tough anti terrorism law. Whether it would be arbitrarily misused to suppress genuine dissenting voices and put human rights under threat is an important question. More on that in the coming episodes. Thank you for watching Bangladesh Today.
of interstate cooperation. Well, you see, this is a law point. It's a very technical point. Uh, it, it depends on the, what the law of the land says, as you're talking in terms of terrorism. Well, uh, these uh, pictures in the video, pictures in the internet, they can be morphed, they can be manipulated. I mean, a lot of angles are there to it. So on what uh, context uh, this news is coming up, actually... One Parliament has amended the strong anti-terrorism law, which redefines terrorism and one which allows the judiciary to recognize internet matter as proof. The Khalida Zia-led opposition BNP has fervently opposed this move, calling the proposed new law as a black law. A report. The anti-terrorism law was first passed in 2009 when the current Awami League had taken over office after the December 2008 election. It has to be very clear what is the background to it. We have to go through the background. But uh, on the face of it, I personally feel a mature country like India will think number of times before it even ventures into making an amendment like that because it can uh, it, it can uh, sort of a, uh, uh, become counterproductive in maintaining, maintaining law and order and maintaining the law of the land. So While it was amended last year, integrating some provisions. The recently amended law provides for capital punishment for terrorism and seditious activities depending upon the seriousness of the crimes. Reportedly, officials who are well known with the outline of the law said that the new bill which now awaits regular presidential EQS was also required to overcome few falls predominantly in areas of Bangladesh today. I'm Mugda Kapoor. The Bangladeshi